All right, so today I'll be going over uh, this homework assignment that we have for our uh, Cobalt Strike Learning Group, how to pass the hash with Mimi Cats. And if you just sort of follow along the steps, right, doing one, two, three, four, and five, it might seem very straightforward and um, nothing too fancy, but if you actually try to break it down and understand what's going, going on under the hood, it, it, there's a lot of very important concepts at, at play here. So uh, that is a part of it that I'm probably going to uh, really focus on for this demo is uh, all of the different underlining concepts uh, behind uh, this, this uh, technique. That, that is important to sort of uh, be aware of. Okay, so uh, first off, right, uh, my two VMs are, my two target, so this is the Linux VM that's running Cobalt Strike, and the two target VMs is uh, this, this VM right here, which is uh, the IP, so we're just gonna uh, talk about the IP address, right? So this VM is uh, 152, and it's the one that I have uh, two beacons on. And let's see if I can jump to my third VM. And then uh, this is the ultimate VM we want to get on is 139, right? And uh, the, the scenario here is that there is some sort of uh, some trust path between uh, this VM and this other VM we currently have access on, so 152, right? So the very, so I have two, I have two uh, beacons here on, on that 152. And uh, the first thing I'm gonna do is, uh, the one thing I wanna note is that notice for the user here on the second one, uh, Consoto, it has a star, an asterisk on it, right? And also for the icon, right? It has this red glowy thing. That means we have administrator privileges uh, with this beacon. The top one with the user Dave, it's just grayed out and there's there's no asterisk and therefore uh, we don't, we get, it's just a normal user and we don't have special access there, right? So let's just interact with it. Oh dude, I hope, hopefully it's still alive. I think it might, it might potentially be dead. And if so, I might have to spawn a new one really quick. So let me just jump on over and try to spawn a new one really quick, just in case uh, this beacon is dead, dead on us. So let's jump back here. We need a uh, regular command window here. Okay, regular command window, uh, who am I? And so uh, one thing to note here that's really important is that we have to sort of think about different use user accounts and different privileges and uh, yeah, different um, access according to those privileges. So in this case, I'm going to try to spawn off this uh, beacon from this context where it's just a regular uh, Dave user. So run that and then we go back here. And just to make things a little faster, I think I'm gonna jump to my more privileged account as well here. And let's uh, just to make sure I have access to that. But all right, let's jump back here. We ran this PowerShell. We're waiting for it. Oh, don't tell me. Don't tell me. The freaking make sure. I think I might have some networking issues since everything came up here. No, nope, that looks good. Why is this shell not coming up? 152, come on. There it is. It just took its sweet time. Okay, desktop. Ah, uh, okay, I think that's why, okay. So here's my, ah, uh, okay, I, I, so funny enough, right? So I think previously what happened was that I was playing with this, this Dave one on the top and I didn't realize that it was on a uh, win and not on the desktop. So I, I was interacting with the wrong uh, computer. So that, that's what was happening there. But okay, so let's get back on track here. So let's interact with this one. Uh, the PID for that one is a 606. 608, so I, it's 34, let me check the time here. So, you know, this is the fun sometimes. Desktop, okay, yeah, yeah, I, I'm, I'm totally lost. Okay, so basically I ran this on this VM, which is uh, the computer is win and not the desktop. And what I want is a desktop here. 
So no, no. What I want is the desktop. Here. Yeah, yeah. What I want is this. And this one looks like it's dead. So let's just remove this. It doesn't look like it's talking to us anymore. And this is a new one that we just got. So let's just interact. And this is the fun thing about when you're running these operations with a lot of beacons and a lot of VMs, it's very easy to get lost. So that's, that's, that's the fun of do, doing these demos. Okay, let's remove that and let's go back to the right VM. So, okay, let's, let's, let's again do, do, do a spot check here, right? So this is the VM that we want to uh, have our, this is the starting VM that we want our two beacons. And that would be too easy. Let's see if I can get, there it is. I want this command right here. Boom, okay. And I wanted just a normal uh, user account. So let's go here. Okay, yeah, so, so this one would be a normal. So uh, who am I, right? Just regular Dave user. And then so we run that uh, to uh, get our beacon. So let's go here. And once again, this is the desktop. We care about the desktop. So for all intents and purposes, I could probably, yeah, I already killed that so I can remove this. Okay, so now I'm going back to square one and we're trying to start off with our initial starting point where we have uh, two beacons on that desktop. Okay, so we have that. Okay, so now let's interact with our new one. Okay, and this one, okay, I killed a lot of these VMs so I can close this. So that's a other thing when you're dealing with a lot of beacons, uh, having a good workflow to manage it all is very important. So you can keep track of what's going on and not uh, do stuff in the, the wrong uh, uh, con console. Okay, so in this case, uh, sleep zero, get UID. So we got 30 seconds for that to come back. But yeah, so, and I can talk about the steps really fast, right? So the first step is that we're, we're on this VM and basically the first thing that we're trying to do here is we're trying to see if we can get information that is useful for us to either uh, gain more privileges or uh, get information that will help us get access to other systems. So th that's that's the goal here, right? So, so keep that in mind. So, okay. This, uh, that's that. So right here from this beacon here, right? From this Dave one, that's nothing special. Uh, it's just a regular Dave user. So uh, first command according to, the, to that blog, right? Is to run hash. Down. So let's run it. And if you run it, you'll notice this error message. Uh, this requires administrative privileges. So let's see what hash dump does, right? So let's do hash, help hash dump. So it injects into the LSAS process and then that's how it goes about actually dumping the hashes. And to do that, right, to have that type of permission, you have to have really high level administrative privileges. And so for those people who don't do uh, these type of attacks commonly, they might be surprised by that, right? In terms of, hey, in order to actually do interesting stuff on, an, on a system and to get like more valuable information, you actually have to have a really high level of privilege to do so. So for defenders, that's something that you know you, you should keep in mind and it's not game over that just because someone's on a box they could just automatically just hose your system that's not necessarily the case so so that's something that's very important to keep in mind so now instead i jump to this other console that has a more privilege right that has ad admin privileges and if we do so we run hash dump right that actually works and we actually get all of these different hashes. So the cool thing about Cobalt Strike is uh, when you run that command and get all, all of those uh, creds, you could go here up to view and credentials and it will populate all of that in this, uh, in, in this tab. And then basically you could then uh, use this tab uh, to sort of combine with other functionalities within Cobalt Strike. So, so that's really powerful and useful. So the other really good command besides hash dump that you should run is you should also run a log on passwords. And what that will do is that, uh, so, so now I'm sort of diving deep more into the internals, the operating system internals of Windows and how it works, right? So other concepts here, that's not, that's sort of not covered if you're just going step by step here and not really, really reading the details and doing additional research is that the way Windows works is that it, it uses uh, this operating primitive called access token. And based on that access token, uh, based, based on that access token, uh, that's what 
the, that's what the uh, the authentication mechanism decides. The access control mechanism decides whether or not you have access to different objects on Windows, right? So, so there's this idea of an access token, and there's this other object in Windows operating system called a, a I think it was called a logon session. So there's this thing called a logon session as well, where I believe that that's somehow connected with an access token and also your process, right? And then within process, you have these uh, these objects called threads. So you have process, threads, you have access tokens, you have security identifiers, SIDs, right? And then you have these login sessions. So all of those uh, combine and is sort of in the mix when the Windows operating system makes a, an access control decision in terms of whether or not you have access to this object, to this file, uh, to these file shares, right? So, so basically, I guess threw out a word salad there. And for you to sort of really understand what's going on there, you really have to sort of do research, right? Do real research there and understand what are those all those different concepts. So, so in here, so, so back to our demonstration. So we ran hash stamp and login passwords, and then we got a bunch of, of credentials here, right? So now I believe the next step, right, is, um, okay, so first off, uh, from this system here, from, from this beacon here, so let me make sure I'm in the right beacon, right? So the, my more privileged one is three, two, three, uh, three, two, three, two. So from here, I'm going to run this shell commander, and I'm going to do 192.168.237 dots. And I believe that it was 154, but let me just check really fast with that VM. So what IP address are you? So this is the ultimate, this is the ultimate final target that we're trying to get access on, right? And this guy is 152. So if we just run this uh, dir command, right? Uh, 152 with uh, the C directory here, right? So we're trying to access this 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 share, this directory on that system, and you know this whole syntax of, of uh, you know what does this mean, right? What's what's back backslash backslash? What's C dollar sign? Those are really important concepts that you should sort of research and find out. But we're, so when we, we try to run it, we get back this error message: the username or password is incorrect, so we don't have access to it, right? So uh, Okay, so let's follow on in that uh, blog article, right? So first we ran hashcat and we ran logon password to have credential materials. The next step is now we're gonna run Mimikatz to uh, create, um, uh, how, how, how can I best explain this? We're, we're basically creating probably the way I will explain it is we're, we're creating some type of processes that will have our token that has the right uh, uh, privileges that we need. So, so that's what we're doing. And I believe uh, the way it's doing that is it's injecting the hash that we have here from credentials. It, it's, it's, so in this case, it's gonna be this Dave credential, right? So I'm gonna copy that. That's copied uh, the clipboard. And then we go back here. And then, so yeah, it's, it's creating this token object basically that then we would want to use to uh, uh, access uh, the other system. So that, that's what's happening conceptually in a nutshell. So let, let's, let's go through that process, right? So we run, uh, okay, so the easiest way is to, to paste my credentials. So this is from the cut and paste from the credentials, right? And then we're gonna fill it in. So it's Mimikatz, uh, circu LSA, patch the hash, and the user here is Dave. So there's a user. Oh, come on, are you kidding me? Okay, let's try that again. Uh, Mimi Katz, uh, S K U R L S A, patch the hash, uh, user, uh, and then let's paste this, Dave. And then we go to the domain, which is Marvel. And then a quick note there about domains. Uh, another important concept is what's the difference between uh, domains and, and, and domain accounts and objects and just uh, users and privileges associated just to the local computer. So those are two different things. And then LTA, LTLM. And so LTLM, that's an, another concept that you need, need to know as well, right? And then finally, the run command, run. And in this case, I'm just gonna run PowerShell, right? So this is the Mimikatz command I want to run. And let's jump back to our uh, our original machine, right? So originally we have this. This is our target machine, right? So let's see what happens when we run that Mimikatz command. 
So we run this Mimi Cats command. Okay, it's ran. And if you jump really quick over here, notice that a new PowerShell popped up, right? And the, re the reason it popped up, it was because that was what we specified to, to run there. So that's the reason it popped up. And the important information we want here from this process that Mimi Cats created is this PID. So Mimi Cats created this new process with uh, this hash, right? And it created a token with this, this hash. So uh, those are the important points you, you need to know. And from here, right, uh, the final step is to actually do that dir command again. But before that, let's, let's do a sanity check, right, to see uh, what was our starting case. And our starting case is if we run that dir command, right, we get password is incorrect, right? So what, we, what we'll do now is we'll steal that token that Mimi Cats just created. So in this case, it's uh, 6644, right? We steal that token. So now we have that token. So now let's do that dir command again, right? So we do that dir command and jackpot, right? We have access to that uh, directory on that remote computer and we're able to uh, list, list the, the file contents. And then finally, the very last step is that according to that blog, it tells us to use uh, uh, WMI to get code execution. So let's do that. And the way that the article um, shows how to do that is they would first create a beacon, uh, a beacon binary, and then upload that beacon binary to our target, so to this file share right here, and then it, and then it was going to use WMI to actually execute it. We're going to take a quick shortcut and sort of make it a little more, a little more fancy, right? We're going to take it up a notch here. So let's go node 192.168.237.152, uh, I believe is the IP of our target. And we're gonna do process call create. And what we're gonna call create is we go here, we already have a, a web delivery web shell. So we're just gonna use that instead of uploading a, a beacon binary. So that's that's been uh, copied to my clipboard. So I can just paste it here. So that's pasted and let me escape all my double quotes here. All right, and we'll get rid of the hidden so we can see things pop up because we like things to pop up. All right, so what this command is doing is that it's gonna interact with the WMI, um, uh, the WMI sort of system on that, that uh, 152 and then it's going to execute this. And the reason that we're able to do this is because according to the current token that we've created with Mimi Cats, we now have the right privileges to run this. That, that's why we're able to execute this. So let's run this and fingers crossed. Come on. Okay, this looks good. So the return value is zero. So that, that means it probably executed properly and jackpot, right? Check it out, uh, interact. Uh, sleep zero and get UID, right? So when I ran that command, I got this uh, new beacon oops, on this uh, Win computer instead of that desktop computer. And when things come back, right, it shows that we do have execution on that system. And let's just wait for it. And, you know, unless there's any questions or comments, right? That was the, the Mimi Cats uh, demo with Cobalt Strike. I think we have 20 seconds before it should come back. And just, just to show that it really works, right? We're, we're, gonna, we're gonna wait for it. And um, yeah, I get I guess the other comment I wanna make here is that, you know, when you're uh, looking up all these resources to use Cobalt Strike to figure out how to do different things, that part of it's really easy in terms of, it'll give you like all the exact commands you need to uh, do your different uh, activities and the techniques, but to understand what's really going under the, what's how it works and what's happening under the hood, right? That takes a lot more digging it, into it, right? And, and doing other type of activities to sort of ensure that your understanding of Cobalt Strike is, is correct. And with that, I'm going to stop uh, this demonstration.